want to just say God is so good and what a blessing it is to be here tonight and what a blessing it is when you can see the great work of Crystal Ray and Urban Ventures. It's not a pie in the sky. They're not hoping or wishing to do great work. They're doing great work. And we saw that with Raven, Mr. Muhammad, Tamika, Juan. They were right in front of our eyes. And then we saw an incredible woman, Marlene, give her time. And then we saw a woman who said, you know what, I was a prime example as well. I'm, I came through the program, now I'm a leader, I'm doing great things with my life. I want to focus in on my community. And I thought what Trina said was amazing, to come from homelessness, despair, no hope, come from that envir environment to graduating college because two angels came flying in, in Art and his wife, and said, no, we're not going to let you give up. No, we're not going to let you give me that excuse. No, somebody loves you and cares about you. And yes, I'm going to give you an opportunity, but I'm not going to give you a handout. You got to make your own way. You got to do it yourself. But I'm going to provide the opportunity for you. And then it's up to you to do the work. Wow. What a true blessing for Art to give his life up for kids, people he don't, he don't even know and shouldn't care about. People who don't even look like him. Father Tim, the same thing. People don't, don't even look like him. And he said, you know what? I care about you. I love you. God put me on this earth to, to touch you in a, in a great way and to be an example to you. Man, that was powerful. P Tamika says, my father didn't want to be my father. My mother is dealing with health issues. I have many siblings. I could give up. But she said, no, I want to go to St. Paul. Where's Tamika at anyway? What grade is she in? A senior? All right, where's Tamika? Is she gone? You're a senior, sweetheart? All right, I'm going to donate 10000 to you going to St. Paul. <laughs> and then Cookie and I, Art and Tim, we have given out all our money for this year, but my first check in January is going to be to Crystal Ray and Urban Ventures, and we're going to give you $50,000, Cookie and I, for the work that you're doing. Wow. Hello. We're so blessed. Man, Tamika and Juan, and I almost started crying. Mr. Mohammed is carrying a four point. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about that, Mr. Mohammed. I couldn't get that high, that many A's. But I'm blown away and continue to be successful. 
And then Raven was saying, man, I want to be a lawyer. Art and Tim, Father Tim, that's because of you. See, you've taken the kids out of their environment and, and you showed them that Minnesota and, and this city and life has more to offer them. And when they were able to visualize it and see it for themselves, then they know they can reach for the stars. But see, if you're still in the same environment each and every day, you don't know that St. Thomas, St. Paul, University of Minnesota, you don't know if you can achieve that because you're used to the same two or three blocks. And you're used to the same thing on the corner happening, your father not in your life. So we're seeing so many problems in urban America. So Father Tim and Art, you've taken them and said, we got you. And we're going to show you something different. And then you build this incredible building right in the heart of the community. Because we'll feel and touch people, Latinos and African Americans. We, we've been let down so many times, so we were waiting for you to build it. Right? Our, you know our smile, our said, yeah, yeah, Magic, I got you. So our, when we saw it, and then we touched it, we said, okay, it's real. And thank God that you built this here. Thank God, because now you've given the whole community pride and you brought the community hope. See, and that's what urban America is about. What you've started, then I take it, I've taken it, I've taken it, excuse me, from there to the next level, and that's redevelopment. And that's why I had to decide when I was wearing those tight hot pants with the Lakers. <laughs> what I was going to do with my money. And I decided Art, to invest it in urban America. Because the same buildings you were talking about, the same crack houses that you had to tear down, is the same buildings I saw too. Here we are, unemployment, the highest it's ever been in America. But think about it, it triples in urban America, especially for black men. So if it's at 10% for the general public, it's over 30% for us and Latino men just up under that. Then we have the highest dropout rate we've ever had in urban America, in urban schools. So this school means a lot, Our, you and Father Tim. This school means a lot. So I see it every single day because I do urban America every single day. So what I've done is I said, okay, what do we need? We need job opportunities. We need big boxes is coming to our community so it can not only supply opportunity, but also jobs. So that's why I approach Sony to build Magic Johnson theaters. We built six of those across the country. Stand up, Joe. So Joe, yeah, yeah. You look good, you got tan, I, I see it. So Joe, what happened is, when I did my homework, minorities are a number of group of people who were going to the movies, but there was no theaters in our community. So Joe, I said, man, I gotta get a partner because that's one of the most affordable things we can still do in urban America, is still go to the movie. So Joe, I went and we made a deal, and we were gonna open on that Friday, Joe. And the food bar from Lowe's, I said, Joe, how many hot dogs do you have for the opening? And the food bar looked at me like I was still a basketball player, Joe. 
So he said, you got enough for a month. So I said, okay. So we opened the theater, Joe, on that Friday. Now, the same amount of hot dogs they get, where are you from? Minneapolis. Okay. What side of town? Well, Northwest. Northwest. The same amount of hot dogs in Northwest that they have at your theater, that's what they gave me, right? So we opened on Friday, Joe, and sold out all the hot dogs Friday night. <laughs> he told me that was enough for a month. But what he didn't understand, Joe, in urban America, we're not going to go to dinner in a movie. We're going to have dinner where? At the movie. See, he didn't know urban America, so I had to teach him. So, Joe, I'm out at the supermarket buying hot dogs and buns Saturday morning <laughs> for the mistake he made. You got me, Joe? I love that, Joe. <laughs> Art and Father Tim learning how to do business in urban America. That's the reason I told that story. That's why my per caps were higher than, higher than anybody's in the industry. Because I do business every day in urban America. You can't just bring Pepsi or Coke into urban America. We grew up on Kool-Aid. <laughs> so it's flavors that we want. So you have to understand that if you grew up in urban America, you would understand that. So then I approached Howard Schultz, Darren, and I said, Howard, the growth of your business would be through urban America. Minorities, we want to have options. And this is a great option for us right here to go to this incredible school. So I said, Howard, you already got a Starbucks on every corner in suburban America. And I said, your growth will be through urban America. So he came down to see my theater. And uh, thank God, a movie called Waiting Next Hell was playing. So I had 5,000 African-American women wrapped around the corner to see Whitney Houston. <laughs> True story. So he came around the corner. He couldn't believe what he saw. So we got inside the lobby, and the lobby was alive. Hey, girl, how you doing? How's the family? So he's impressed. He saw how I managed my theater. It was clean, beautiful. So Darren, stand on up. He got in the movie theater. My biggest house is 500. And he started to watch the movie. And what he didn't understand, Darren, is minorities, we go to movies a little different than everybody else. So sure enough, those 500 women were in there talking to the screen to Whitney Houston. <laughs> Dump him. Why are you still with him? And so they're trying to tell her to leave her man because he was cheating on her. You, got, you follow me? Yeah, I am with you. you with I me? am with you. Okay, cool. So 20 minutes in, Darren, Howard grabbed me and said, I've never had a movie-going experience quite like this. <laughs> and guess what he said, Darren? You got the deal. We built 125 Starbucks in urban America. Now, this is what is perfect about it. My per caps were higher than his per caps. I did 459 a, a person, a customer. He, he's doing 451. They said it would never work. No way Latinos and African Americans would pay $3 for a cup of coffee. Yeah, we would pay $3 for a cup of coffee. We each quite don't know what scones are. <laughs> We quite don't know what scones are. So, Darren, we have to bring in pound cake, socket to me cake, peach cobbler into my Starbucks. And that's what I did. We put thousands of minorities to work. I'm blessed. Each and every day, about 40,000 minorities go to work because of my businesses. And <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> so
So when Art and Father Tim takes them and educates them, and they do the most amazing job doing that, the next step is what is waiting for them after that. And that's what we're talking about, job opportunity. And that's what I try to supply, is opportunities for minorities. I since sold those Starbucks back to Howard. It's been a, it was an amazing run for us, 10-year deal. I was able to drive ROI. I was able to, to promote minorities from just serving the coffee to becoming managers, then district managers, general managers, area managers. Starbucks is a better company because they have minorities now in high-ranking positions because of the partnership. That's what we're talking about. So then from there, and let's give a hand to one of the greatest coaches, I don't care if it's college or pro, this man, he gonna compete, he gonna always have him playing great defense, great rebounding team, and also execution wise, nobody's gonna execute like University of Minnesota. And I respect him, his wife is the best as well. You're blessed to have him as your college coach here Coach Smith, let's give him a hand. <clears throat> His beautiful wife as well. Keep clapping for the men of University Minnesota Gophers. Stand on up. The team is here. Come on, let's hear it for him. The team is here. What are we talking about here? Life lessons. Coach Smith said, okay, let's bring you over to hear Magic speak. All we're talking about is life lessons today. He's giving them a life lesson on how to not only graduate, don't put all your eggs in one basket that I'm going to make it to the NBA, but also get your degree. So if you don't make it, then, hey, I can be like magic on the other side of that and be a business man. That's what he's giving you today. Be like magic and be fundamentally sound. Because Larry Bird and I couldn't jump but this high. <laughs> True story. But we knew how to play basketball. See, and I'm going to tell you something right now. Every game I got the tape first that night from Coach Hiko, I didn't go to the club. I went to my room and put that tape in. That's when Betamax, VH, all that was out then. <laughs> I put it in and I replayed the game, whether we won or lost. And I critique myself. So when Coach Smith came in on Saturday after you, I'm sorry, on Sunday after you played on Saturday, before he could, Coach Hiko could tell me what happened, I told him I made five turnovers that I shouldn't have made. I missed two blockout assignments. And he was sitting up there like, wow. See, you got to take self-evaluation, Austin, of yourself, Maverick of yourself, Ralph of yourself, Joe of yourself, Otto, Otto of yourself, Rodney of yourself, Elliot of yourself. Did I miss somebody? Kendo of yourself. You shouldn't have to wait for him. You know the mistakes you made in that game. You don't have to wait for the glare, because I see all you guys are fr afraid to look over there, because he give you that glare, right? <laughs> see, I made that turnover. Be a student of the game, and then be fundamentally sound. That's how you win. That's how you make it. Those two things, because you got the heart. 
But remember, Michael Jordan was fundamentally sound. That's why he was the greatest. Larry Bird was fundamentally sound. See? So remember that, okay? I had to come to you guys because I'm impressed that you're here. And I love your coach and his wife. And so good luck this season. Give it up for them one more time. Young men here. So I, I went from there, and uh, I know I only got about five or ten more minutes, but I, I, I went from there to I learned the word, uh, Mike, stand on up. Because just like Tamika, or Trina, I'm sorry, Trina learned from other people just like I did, Mike. So you taught me a word that uh, I never forgot, and that word was Use other people's money. <laughs> See, they shouldn't have never taught this 6'9 African American man that word, Art. Because what I did, Mike, because I was funding all of the, my businesses in the beginning myself out of my own pocket. But then, Mike, when you reached out to me, OP. And you told me, Magic, you're doing it wrong. That's when I went up to Sacramento and started raising funds. So thank you. But Colleen, when I went up to get institutional capital to invest in my first fund, they turned me down four times. Gentlemen, this is good for you. But I went up there again because I had a solid business strategy. I knew that the returns were there. And I had a solid track record of success. Oh, Jim like that. <laughs> With the Starbucks and the theaters and my gyms. So finally they said, you know what, Irvin? You got a solid business, business strategy. But why hasn't some African American come up before you wanted to do the same thing. Jim, I didn't know what to say to that. So this was what happened, Colleen. Young men, you need to know this and always put this in your mind, okay? It's not enough just to deliver to coach or to your teammates anymore. You have to over-deliver. And in business today, we all have to over-deliver now. It's not enough for us just to deliver anymore. So Mike, they said, I'm going to give you $50 million. Mike and it, they said, if you're successful with the $50 million, Jim, they said, I can come back and get the $100 million so I could have $150 million. So I took that 50, Jim. I bought a center art in urban America that was only 40% occupied. I made that center 100% occupied. I brought in different boxes. Resold the center, Jim, for $48 million. I took that $26 million profit that I made up to Sacramento to CalPERS, and they said, oh, I guess you do know business. And I guess we can drive returns in urban America, Art. Sure enough, I started my first real estate fund off of that. Because, gentlemen, I over-delivered to CalPERS. So I have the numbers, number one real estate urban fund in America, we started off 30, 300 million. It took me two and a half years to raise 300 million, Jim. It was hard. But we returned everybody 30% on their money. You like that return, don't you? Jim said, yeah. Magic, let's, let's talk after this, he said. <laughs> In a tough economy, we the second fund, because we had success, it only took us six months to raise 600 million because we had that 30% return. Jim said, yeah, I, I got you. And we ended up being flat, Jim, because the economy, we was running 22% until the recession. But we didn't lose anybody any money, so they were happy about that. Peggy, they were smiling, because I was only one of the only funds that they didn't lose money with. So then we just end up now with a billion dollar fund. We, what we do with our fund is we either build mixed use or bring hotels, 
housing, all of that to urban America, and also retail. So that's what we do with the fund. That way we can now give jobs away as we're building these great buildings. Also, we can employ people, train them, and then employ them in urban America. So that's what we do with our fund. And I was disciplined enough, uh, Peggy, come here, I wanna talk to you on this one. <laughs> so Peggy, I had two billion committed. You're pretty tall. I'm pretty tall. <laughs> I, I thought you knew that, Peggy. <laughs> and so Peggy, I don't know when there's, there, there's ever a time when a black man can turn down a billion dollars, but I did. Because there was not enough deal flow for me to spend, right, Jim? Up two billion dollars. So I only took a billion, Jim. So Peggy, I wanted you to know that I was I stayed disciplined. Good. Is that good? I think it's very good. Thank you. I love her. She just <laughs> give her a hand. She's so sweet. So then on the flip side, uh, I'm coming back to Mike now. Since my real estate fund was successful, I reached out to Ron Burko and his Ukaipa company. And we started an equity fund together. And so, and that fund is to buy urban-based businesses. So I just bought uh, Vibe magazine and Uptown magazine and this great brand called Soul Train, and we're gonna bring it back and put it on air again, because we all learned how to dance from Soul Train, right? So. And then we bought a, a cluster of uh, urban radio stations. I bought the biggest urban station in New York, WBLS, it's not announced yet. Oh, somebody know New York, huh? You know New York. It's not announced yet, so don't tell nobody. Okay, so it's, it's about 32 stations within that package, and uh, we bought about another three stations in Phoenix, the number one Latino station, hip-hop station, and, and so we have a meat grinding company, Mike, that uh, we do ground beef and, and uh, turkey. And so those, these are the things that we try to invest in. And guess what, Mike? Out of 90% of all those companies, 90% of all the employees are people of color. And that's, it affects the community in a positive way. And that's what it's all about. <clears throat> so what am I talking about? I'm talking about when those kids are dreaming when those kids are dreaming, if they can really do it, can I really become the lawyer as Raven wants to become? Is anybody that looks like me doing that? She can see that. If Mr. Muhammad wants to be a businessman, he can see that magic is doing it and he looks like me. That's what we need. We need people that we can dream and say, hey, I can be like him or her. John is doing great work at Best Buy. So somebody say, hey, if I want to work at corporate America, oh, John is sitting right there. And it's important that he is sitting there because he looks like me. See, unless we have those people sitting in those positions we can't dream to go that far. But now we do have people of color in important positions. And we have President Obama sitting in an important position. Ken Chenault sitting in an important position. That's important. So I hope that we write bigger and more checks to this organization because they're doing amazing work. And I saw that tonight. Mr. Muhammad, come up here. Raven, come back. Tamika, come back up here. Juan, come back up here. And then all the kids who are a part of this program, come back up here. All of them that go to Crystal Ray that's here. Anybody that go to Crystal Ray, come up here right now. I want you all on the stage. Everybody that go to Crystal Ray, come on up here. John, can I dust that water?
No, no hands in the pockets, no hands folded. I want you standing straight up and looking right at the people. Then come on, just keep coming. We can go in front of people. Short ones, come on up so you, so you can be seen. Hands by your side. I want you to look like you got confidence because you do. So let's, let's look good. Stand straight up. And we got some room up here too. Come on up. We got some room up front. Everybody don't want to be up front. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because God is so good. Look at this. Look at this. Come on up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so here we are. Here we are. You got tables of companies who believed in you. You got a man who had vision, see, unselfish. Didn't have to come in our community, in your community, and do this, right? He said, I believe in this community and I believe in you. Him and his wife, they could have retired, they could have did something else. But no, they said, we want to build something that can touch you, that can help you not with just your family, but with your education. Now, what is your job in this? See, your job is to go and take care of business each and every day when you're in school. That's your job. That's, that's when you're going to say thank you to them too. See, they don't want nothing else. They don't want no money. They don't want, uh, they want to hug sometime, high five. <laughs> but what they want is you to go be successful. And then they want you to touch the community, go give back to somebody. Once you've been helped, you've got to help 10 others, 20 others. 50 others in your, in your community. A lot of you going to be the first one in your family to go to college like I was. Six sisters, three brothers. Went to bed some nights hungry. You can't play sports in a family of 10 and get to the dinner table late, Kyle. You can't do that. That was me. You may be poor, but you don't have poor dreams. I was poor, but I didn't have poor dreams. I said I wanted to play in the NBA, and I said I wanted to be a businessman. So I had to get an education to achieve both. Now, did I do that? Mm-hmm. I had, I was supposed to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but I only had the peanut butter or the jelly sometimes. I was supposed to have Kool-Aid, but I only had the sugar and the water sometimes. You see what I'm saying? So same situation, so it's no excuses. Right? The opportunity is right in front of you. Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Because you're going to come back and be just like Trina. Right? There she is over there. Stand up for them because they need to see you. You're going to come back. You're going to graduate college. And you're going to be just like her. See? And then for my Latino brothers up here, when you become a father, you're going to speak like Juan. Said, I'm into my kids. I support them. I'm into my wife. I'm a better father. That's what it's all about. Don't let yourself down. Don't let your family down. And then don't let Father Tim and Art down. Because they built this for you. Oh, man, if I had this in my community, I wouldn't, have, I, I wouldn't have gone home. Man. I see all these baskets up here. Ooh, man, I would. Come on, man, give me a hug, cause you you did something. No, I'm I'm serious, man. 
And I didn't forget your beautiful wife either. Great job, sweetheart. Great job. Man, right here in the heart of your community, man, we got to take advantage of this. So I wanted them to come up here because I wanted you to see where your money is going. See? And what Art and Father Tim has built is incredible. You can sleep good tonight knowing your money is going for a great cause. It's called cause and effect. This is the effect right here. See? I couldn't wait to say hello to you. I'm writing my check because I believe in you too. And you turned my life around today. Art, you turned my life around. Father Tim, maybe I'm not doing enough because this is exciting. So I want you to do something for me because Best Buy said, Mr. Johnson, we want you to come. And so I want you to cl clap for Brian Dunn and the Best Buy company and they're up here couple of tables, okay? Can I have the program? <clears throat> I want you to clap for General Mills. They here somewhere. Where's General Mills at? They here somewhere. Uh-huh. They did a good job. Okay. See, let Father Tim help me out or are any uh oh here it is. The Ryan Company. Oh, I, I mess with the Ryan Company all so clap for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mike and I going to meet afterwards and we're going to discuss some business. Sean, you hooked that up for me. I need another fund. Uh, Advanced Auto Parts, where, where are they? Yeah, good job. Advanced Auto Parts. Come on, clap for them now. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Pro, uh. I thought I had the mic. Where's Polaris at? Where, where are you? Where? Yeah, everybody. Stand on up. You're going to represent them. You like what you see? I do very much. What do you think? It's impressive. Very impressive. Very imp I like that. Okay. You're going to represent... Advance all the parts. Come on, Terry. What you think, Terry? They're fantastic. And why? Because they work so hard. Yeah, yeah. They got good heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it's amazing, right? It is. I, I know. All right, uh, come on. Uh, <laughs> Dean, come on, stand up. You can represent the Ryan Company. <laughs> I, don't, don't worry about him. <laughs> you did. You would what? Again, I just want to hurry back to Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so what do you think? Oh, very impressive. Very impressive. I know. Yeah. I know. They're ready too, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna do some great things. And Ryan Company, you you happy you invested in these incredible minds? Yes. You keep look okay. Let me go over to him then. You keep looking at him. <laughs> I guess you must be the boss because he keep looking at you. All right, stand on up. What's your name? I'm Pat Ryan. All right. Oh, oh. Why you just say Pat's over there? I understand now why he was looking at you, Pat. I, I didn't know. See? Uh, I guess I was Donovan McNabb or something. I would have been missing my receivers or something. <laughs> Woo well, what? Are we, we not owing two, are we, yet? Okay, so he's got to just get a little better. He will. He will. I love him. That's my friend. I can talk, you know. We supposed to be 2-0. Oh. You were leading at halftime both games. Right? Okay, 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 cool. Let's get back to uh, Pat here. First of all, congratulations. You built an incredible company. You're well represented, too. I'm impressed. So what do you think about it? Well, these kids are phenomenal. They're our future. Wonderful. And how long you been in business? 78 years. Wonderful. Dad? Not me, right. Yeah. Right. yeah, right. Yeah. Started by my grandfather. Right. Oh, wow. Wonderful. I'm impressed. Now, look at Pat. 
that's who you're going to be one day, all of you, see? doing what you love to do. Pat smiles every day because he, he goes to work because he loves what he, do, he does every single day. He loves his job. He loves what he's built. He loves to affect change in people's lives. And you've done a wonderful job. Thank you for all these tables, too, your employees, family members, and everything, okay? You're doing a great job in this city. Thank you. All right. Next time, tell me. You know? Okay, JT, it's your turn. You got to represent Best Buy. Happy to. So uh, we're very pleased to be here. We think that uh, the amazing work that's going on down here in South Minneapolis uh, is work that's been needed for a long, long time. Uh, we were here for this first graduating class, for the digging the hole when we first started this uh, amazing place down here in South Minneapolis. And I am pleased that uh, you young people are here, so committed to the work that you do. Uh, we are pleased to be a part of that. And we think that between Crystal Ray and Urban Ventures, we are going to change this community and change lives for a long, long time to come. There you go. The public sector and the private sector coming together, doing great things, and that's what it's all about. Young people, dream, dream, just dream. You can't become it if you don't dream it. Dream. And you're looking at a big dreamer right here. I'm serious. I, I didn't know it was going, my life was going to be like this, right? But I was dreaming that I was going to be successful. And you do the same thing. Crystal Ray has already changed your life. Now take it and run with it. These companies have supported you, okay? So make them proud, make yourself proud, make your family proud, and God's going to bless you. Give them a hand one more time as they go back. So go ahead. <clears throat> and in closing, here I am. I've been so blessed to be able to do what I do each and every day, to be able to work with companies like Best Buy and be in partnership with them. Okay. Okay, just take the top. Okay. I appreciate that. Get your, yeah. Uh, all right. Smart man, smart man. Give it up. Let's see that. He sees this opportunity. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. You can get it. Hurry up. Yeah. He, he said he wanted to get into it. Thank you so much. Thank you. They humble you. They reminded me of myself. I know what they're going through. I've been there for, I've been there. Man. They're going to face challenges. And they have to keep on smiling and keep on working. See, urban America don't change 
whether it's here in Minnesota, Michigan, Los Angeles, Chicago, it's all the same. All the same problems, all the same issues. Art, if you ever need me for anything, I'm here. Father Tim, I know how difficult it is. I've been challenged my whole life and meeting challenges head on my whole life. The narc told me I would never amount to anything and I made it a point to prove him wrong every day. I changed my whole mindset when he told me when I got bussed across town to that school and it was all white and of course he was Caucasian and he said to me, you won't amount to anything. And I never forgot that. And it made me buckle down and work harder. If we don't come together like this and affect these young people, a whole generation gonna be lost. Art, you are amazing, man. It takes a village, no question about it. My high school point guard was going to go visit his girlfriend and the neighbor stopped me, where are you going? Because my parents weren't home. Aren't you supposed to be doing your homework? And I turned around and went back. That night at 12 o'clock, I get a call. He got into a car accident and was killed. I was supposed to be in that car because we did everything together. Man. When I was supposed to go right and if I tried to go left, somebody was always there and said, you know that's a bad street. We got bigger things for you. We got bigger plans for you. And sure enough, I turned right or stayed straight. And sure enough, I woke up a couple days later, somebody didn't got shot. Something happened to somebody on that same street that I thought I wanted to go down. <sighs> this is me. They're me. I love this. Man, everyone I'm on that stage, has I've been through the same problems, same issues. Wow. Art, come on up to Father Tim. I just want to say thank you. You've affected my life tonight. You have affected the whole community, but also the city. And you have affected change in all those young people's lives and their families' life. A lot of times, we're a byproduct of our parents. So a lot of times, we do what they do. You know? And what you, what you said is, no, you don't have to do what they do in terms of if they haven't been educated, if they didn't have an opportunity to go to school. And then you work with the parents too as well, the family, the family structure, because the black family structure as well as the Latino family structure sometimes are broken. And, and, and we need to get our family back into the church like we used to. See, my Sunday was already mapped out for me. 
when I was growing up. We're going to go to church, then we're going to eat together, then you can go outside. I just want to say thank you. May God bless all of you. And let's give these two men a standing ovation for what they've been able to do. Thank you.